Could China sink a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier? Could China really sink a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier with its nuclear-powered Nimitz-class and Gerald R. Ford-class supercarriers? This is the question that is asked over and over again on the internet as a way to talk about how weak these ships are. So do you want to get the answer? Don't worry, strategist, you'll get to know this mysterious answer only here on Defense Tech, where we reveal the strength and weaknesses of different armies in the world. Now let's start with the video. So the answer is yes. Yes, China could sink a U.S. Navy aircraft. Steel, which doesn't float, is used to make all warships today. Several well-placed shots could go through armor. If nothing was done to stop it, 50 caliber rounds below the waterline could even cause a modern carrier to sink. But it wouldn't be as simple as just making a hole in the container. Modern ships are made to be hard to sink, but it's still possible to do so. Could China manage it? Don't say that something can't sink. Simply put, no one has made a questionable claim that a ship can't sink in 110 years. Philip Franklin, vice president of the White Star Line, which owned the RMS Titanic, is said to have said, there is no danger that Titanic will sink when he heard that the ship had hit an iceberg on April 15, 1912. Franklin told reporters who were waiting outside of New York's press offices for news about the ship, the boat can't sink and the passengers will only have trouble. He didn't admit his mistake until much later, saying, I thought she couldn't sink because that's what the best experts told me. I don't know what it means. Since that night to remember, which happened more than a century ago, a lot of changes have been made, and global shipping losses have gone down by a lot. But as the sinking of the Costa Concordia in 2012 showed, no ship is really unsinkable. Like hitting an iceberg nearly 100 years ago, hitting a rock won't lead to a good outcome. It will be harder for China to sink, but not impossible. As warships have grown bigger, it's gotten harder to sink them with just gunfire. Still, the forward-thinking U.S. Army General Billy Mitchell was able to show in the 1920s that a small plane could sink a battleship, which many in the U.S. Navy didn't like very much. During the Second World War, it was found that carriers and battleships could be sunk with just one or two torpedoes. It was also found that torpedoes were much more effective than bombs. Today, the question is whether or not a submarine could get close enough to fire a torpedo. A carrier doesn't go out on its own. It is accompanied by a strike group made up of submarines, a cruiser, and several destroyers or frigates. The carrier's air wing will also do anti-ship warfare or ASW missions on a regular basis. Yet, in 2005, the USS Ronald Reagan CVN-76, which had just been built, was sunk in a war game between a task force of carriers and the small Swedish diesel-powered submarine HSMS Gauntland. The submarine was so quiet that it could run circles around the carrier strike group. Because of this, there is still a fear that an enemy could wait for a chance to attack a flat top. In the same year that the Navy was surprised to learn that a small submarine could sink its newest carrier, a Sink X operation tried to sink the Kitty Hawk class aircraft carrier USS America or CV 66. Still, it wasn't as simple as just dropping a bomb like it was in Mitchell's time. In fact, it took four weeks of live fire cannon fire to sink the powerful ship. The CV-66 was much bigger than the battleships of World War II, but it didn't have heavy armor. Instead, it had a double-layered hull with steel and empty spaces in between. Also, she was made with much better compartmentalization on the inside than the old battle wagons. Let's get back to the question. To get back to our main point, China could sink a carrier, and it would be foolish to think otherwise. The People's Liberation Army has talked up its carrier killer missiles, which are said to be powerful and accurate enough to sink even the biggest U.S. Navy ships. Of course, it could be said that the fact that the carriers are so big actually helps the missiles. Big warships are just easier to shoot down. China has stepped up its efforts to approve its accuracy by building U.S. Navy carrier-shaped targets in the middle of the desert. Anti-ship ballistic missiles, or ASBMs, are a threat to carriers and other high-value targets in ways that are hard to predict. Modern heavyweight torpedoes can break the back of a modern carrier, but the submarine would have to be in the right place at the right time. Most anti-ship missiles, on the other hand, haven't been big enough or haven't been able to travel far enough to hit large ships like carriers with a devastating blow. This is where the new missiles that can destroy carriers could change the game and make people wonder about the future of floating air bases. So, this was the answer and explanation to this mysterious question, and we think now you have a good idea about it. So hit the bell icon if you like this video, and ask us anything related to it in the comments section, and please make sure you subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos. Thanks for watching.